Hello, I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and thank you for joining me today. I'm continuing here in Romans chapter 7. We're picking up in verse 10, but I'm backing up to verse 9 for just a moment <clears throat> to remind us that Paul says that I was once alive apart from the law, or from law in general, but when the commandment came, then the sin nature revived. And I just want to make sure we do this. Became alive, however English Bibles translate it, just be assured that the idea <clears throat> behind this expression is that it came back to life. It's not that it's living for the first time. Sin nature had been alive. But what happened for Paul as part of his Christian experience, not as an unsaved man, part of his Christian experience is that he turned back to the commandment, not in order to be righteous before God for eternity, but in order to live the Christian life. And the result was he died. So then, and we picked up in the first part of verse 10, and I died as a result of that. And so I found then, or it was found, that the very commandment that was intended to bring life brought death. Now, the reason that the commandment was to bring life was that the commandment was set up that if they chose to obey God under the law, then they could go on living physically, not spiritually, but physically they could go on living. And in that way, then the law would give them life. Most of you were familiar probably with Paul's statement uh, in Ephesians 6, where he talks to children. He says to obey their parents. And he says, for this was the first command that had a promise. What was the promise? That your life might be long in the land. What did that mean? It means it wasn't cut short, that they could live a long time by being obedient. Whereas if they were disobedient, there was a really good chance their life would be short. And so, with that understanding, then Paul said that the commandment that was intended for life or was unto life came to be or was unto death for Paul. That was frustrating for him. He's finding out that this very thing that he had lived under for many years as an unsaved person, now when he tries to practice and use it in his Christian life, it doesn't help, it doesn't work. Because that's not the way God's designed us to, to live. And we've already seen that back in chapter 5. We saw it in chapter 6. We see it elsewhere in the New Testament, and we've looked at it in some of these studies. God intends for us to live under grace, not under law. So that brings us then to verse 11. 4, and this is how he's going to explain how the death came about. And it's not the fault of the law. It goes back to the sin nature. 4, in our Bible, simply probably just say for sin, but there's a definite article. I just always trying to point this out, to be honest here. For the sin, then taking an opportunity. We looked at this word opportunity uh, the other day, that it had the opportunity, the, or the idea, excuse me, of a base of operation, a base from which to move against violently. And so he's the sin nature then took this, took this base of operation through the commandment, and what did it do specifically? It deceived me. Now, this word for deception, we have several different words in the New Testament that talk about deception, and none of them are exactly the same. And the base of this word for deception had to do with an impression, and in particularly a false impression. You, you sell a thing, that this, this thing is great. This tonic will fix everything that ails you. It'll, it'll uh, make your teeth whiter. It'll fix your vision. You'll regrow your hair, uh, whatever it might be. And that would be a false impression because nothing's going to do that for you. No earthly thing that people are going to peddle are going to do that for you, uh, no matter what it is. And so he said that the commandment or this, <clears throat> excuse me, the sin nature through the commandment gave him a false impression, deceived him by giving him a false impression. What would that false impression be? Well, the false impression that the commandment would be a good way to live, that this is a good way to address maybe interests of the sin nature or things of this nature, that the law would be a, a good guide. Paul had lived under it. God had given it to Israel for 1,500 years. And in that 1,500 years under the law, Paul's thinking maybe, maybe this is what we should do. And so he says, it led me astray, and through it, then it killed me. 
See, by giving him a false impression, Paul turned to the law. And when he turned to the law, then the sin nature used that as a base of operation to move violently against Paul. And in that, it killed him. And what did it do to kill him? What does he mean by kill? Well, it, it caused Paul to go back and rely on his flesh and so move in the realm of spiritual death. He's not losing his salvation. So be very clear on this. He's not losing salvation, but he is not moving in the realm of life. He's moving in the realm of spiritual death, that part of him that is not yet enjoying the benefits of what God is doing. And so with that in mind, then Paul is able to say, verse 12, and we're going to come back to this, but I just want to hit this very quickly, so that the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. And people look at those four statements and they go, ah, we got you right there. See, look at Paul said the law is a great thing. And I agree. Paul's not saying the law isn't a great thing. It's good at what it does, but it was never designed to, to make your life what God wants it to be. It was designed to show people what they couldn't do. We've already seen that here in Romans. You can go back and look at it in Romans 3. Paul said the law was designed to demonstrate that we have a sin nature. Why do we need to know that? Because if we don't realize we have a sin nature, we're always going to try to tough it out. And we think that we, of our own ability, of our own grit, Put it in, some of my friends call it bootstrap religion, grabbing your bootstrap and pulling yourself up. Think about that for a second. Doesn't work, does it? That we think that we can meet God's expectations by our own efforts and it will never happen. And that's what the law was designed to prove to people. Because people, we always overestimate our ability. We do that today. We think, yes, I can do this. I this I, I thought I was committed the 20 times before that I dedicated myself to God, but this time I'm really dedicated to God and I'm really going to do it. And every time they fail, because every time we are the ones trying to do the work. And so he says, the law is holy. The law really was set apart. And if Israel lived by it, they'd be set apart and so on and so forth. We're going to come back and deal with these. But in none of these things, in none of this, I agree with what Paul is just what I'm trying to say. I, I'm not in disagreement, but we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to look at what Paul means by these statements. But therefore, is the thing that was good to me then, did, has it come to be death? Well, no, it's not that the law came to be death, so let it not be, but the sin nature in order that it might appear or be visible, very plainly visible as sin through the good thing. It worked out death in me. He said, that's what the law was designed to do. It did it well. It could really show you that you had a sin nature. But you know what the law couldn't do? It couldn't tell you how to fix the sin nature or how to get free of it. That's the thing the law cannot do, never could do. And I wish Christians would understand that. Not just Mosaic law, but even a law that you or I might create for ourselves today. I have to sit down for 10 minutes in the morning, and I have to pray earnestly, and I need to do a daily devotion or quiet time or whatever you might uh, call that. I've got to do that or I won't have a good day. That's a law. It's not a bad thing. Is there anything wrong with praying and spending time reading your Bible in the morning? No, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you think that you have to do that in order to have a good day or in order for you to be straight and right that day, that becomes a law. Now you've taken something that's a good thing and you've turned it into a law. You see how what I'm talking about? Because you're saying, if I do this, then I can get this blessing. And I have to be doing this activity in this way. And the word of God says that we are not under law, but we're under grace. And I just encourage you, as you're thinking about these things, to remember that you're not under law. You've died to the law. You've died to the sin nature, but you are now alive to God in Christ. And in doing that, you're able to have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget down below to click like and subscribe. 
Have a good day in the Lord.